today addressed the inaugural presidential plenary on science, technology and innovation in Pretoria. Now, the STI plenary will bring together leaders in government, industry, academia, as well as civil society. The president will also visit an exhibition of locally produced market-ready innovations in areas such as space science, health and energy. For more on this, we bring in our reporter, Natasha Piri. Natasha, a good morning to you. What's on the agenda at the plenary? Well, very good morning uh, to you, uh, Naledi, and of course to our agenda view as well. A lot um, is said to be discussed and deliberated upon here at the Presidential Plenary of Science, Technology and Innovation. Of course, you mentioned the fact that um, there will be various exhibitions, and this is where we're actually standing, uh, where various exhibitors will actually be showing off what they have to offer, uh, not only to various stakeholders here, but of course to President Sil Ramaphosa, who will be making his way uh, very soon, shortly, and of of course, he'll start off here, then deliver his address. But to talk to us more about, uh, you know, this uh, inaugural presidential plenary on science, technology and innovation, we joined by Dr. Film Dracha, who's the DDG of the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation. Mr. Dracha, thank you so much for joining us in SABC News. I mean, for an Naledi Mulewa, who's in studio, and for Bab Shabalala, who's in Alex, how important is this to them? And I mean, what, what impact can they actually have on uh, ordinary people's lives? First of all, thank you to the SAPC for giving us the opportunity. The importance of this is that as a science system, over 30 years since the dawn of democracy, we've received generous funding from government uh, to develop capabilities in science, technology and innovation. We think now we've reached a stage where those investments have to show value uh, to the South African public. So what we hope to do in the plenary, therefore, is to engage with the stakeholders, but in particular for the president to acknowledge or to realize that he's got this asset which he can use uh, to address some of the problems that we have as a country. For an example, you will see here exhibitions that demonstrate how we take platinum and we develop products that are being used in green hydrogen, so three stands that are here. Just behind us you will see a stand where we have developed a technology where you take flue gas from a power station and convert it into products. On the other side you will see a stand of a launch vehicle which has been developed at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. So these would be just samples of knowledge and technologies that have been developed in South Africa that could make a difference in people's lives. Um, Mr. Sorry, Dr. Mjaka, this, this um, plenary also comes at the backdrop of the Science Forum. And just correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, you had, um, you know, one session last year. Let's just take stock of the commitments that government had actually made um, last year. And have they actually gained fruition? I was, I was just reading up, um, you know, this morning, and there were talks around developing a hydrogen economy. In terms of those commitments, how far are we as a country to reaching those objectives or those goals? Well, as far as the Science Forum is concerned, and you're correct, last year we hosted the World Science Forum in Cape Town and this year we had a science forum which was hosted here uh, at uh, CSIR in Pretoria. The theme of the World Science Forum was science for social justice. How can you use science to bring inclusivity? How can you use science to inform decision making that are important for transitions that we make? For an example, uh, we made a commitment that we are going to use science to provide if you like social justice to the transition that we're making in energy either from the decisions that come from science where you would actually do modeling and look at the impact of changing from coal-fired power stations into green and renewable power stations so that's what we did last year and uh, what we have now done as a department is we have been working with the presidential commission on climate change to look at how they can call upon us draw on the science that we have done in order to assist government in that transition. Now on the green and hydrogen that you're talking about, the commitment was that we are going to accelerate taking, uh, if you like, lab-related innovations and take them to market. And we are happy to announce that together with the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, we've launched a green hydrogen commercialization fund. This is the fund that will take, as I've said, what you see uh, from the stands here from Mintech, 
from the University of the Western Cape, the Northwest, take those innovations into the marketplace so that we can really start to not only just export green hydrogen, uh, but also to have that green hydrogen in products and fuel cells that go into cars. And then uh, we also have a demonstration of a refueling station prototype that has been developed by the University of the Western Cape as part of the exhibition here. And we, of course, we look forward to um, you know seeing that. I think you've partly answered some of the questions that I've had. But I mean, um, in terms of science, I mean, how how does science make a difference in informing policy? And I mean, you've spoken about social justice. How does science also address um, you know the triple challenges that we actually face here in South Africa? What we did um, in August last year. Uh, because we fund a sizable number of PhD students, just one example of uh, how you can use science to change people's lives. We looked at the PhD students that we've been funding over the last 10 years and we tracked where they are and we found that 90% of those PhD students are working in high jobs that are paying uh, very, very good. So that's just one example. We have a program in the department which is a program on indigenous knowledge system. So this is where people who have indigenous knowledge work with us to validate that knowledge. And we have a vibrant industry in South Africa of people who are developing, for instance, teas. One company that worked with us uh, that developed this tea is now supplying spa with this. One company that has been producing Moringa is now contracted by Nestle to produce Moringa noodles. So this is the spectrum. Moringa the juice. Yes. <laughs> so this is the spectrum of the work that we do in science. We can, as I say, have work that is looking at launching satellite, SKA, as you know, up to really things that uh, make uh, uh, people's lives. We also have a program in one of our agencies called the Technology Innovation Agency. They fund what we call grassroots innovation. So if you have an idea anywhere in South Africa, you come to this program, you register, you tell them what the idea is, and we help them either with the knowledge that we have in our institution to take the product to a higher level. Just to give you one example, one young man came to us with an idea where he said, I realize that the taxi owners don't have a way of tracking how many passengers that were in the taxi uh, during the day and therefore he developed a technology where you can put a camera on the car and therefore you can track the number of passengers that you have. And the taxi owners are very very happy about this and this gentleman who started with this idea I'm told that he has a company now that makes about a million rents a turnover a month. I would love to be in that business. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually great. So just lastly, I'm um, looking at the theme uh, for this year, igniting conversations about science, people, partnerships, and priorities for the Decadal Plan. In a layman's uh, term, just tell us more about the Decadal Plan. Well, the Decadal Plan is a plan 2021 to 2031 that, as I said at the beginning, looks at how we can harness the in, in, investments that we've made in science, technology, and innovation and use them to address the immediate challenges, but also to start anticipate challenges that the country is going to face in the future. Just to give you an example, we were last in the queue in terms of vaccines in South Africa. Now you do know that we have scientists that have been working in the very identifying variants for vaccines, but we also have universities that if we put them together, we can start to produce some of the vaccines locally in South Africa. That's one example. The second example is, whether you like it or not, the sectors of the economy such as mining, agriculture and manufacturing need modernization. If you don't modernize, you'll be left behind. You will not be able to produce at the productivity productivity that is required for the big global markets. So we're working with the private sector to look at how we can modernize mining. In fact, today you'll hear more about the program of us working with the private sector on modernizing mining. 
agriculture is one of the area that we want to modernize and manufacturing. And then we've also identified areas which will impact society in a way that we have never thought of. As you would know, artificial intelligence is one of those areas where in the next 10 or 15 years we're going to wipe a number of jobs. And we need to start anticipating that and provide government with the tools on how this, and as a society, how we're going to address some of this. So that's what the Tech Cattle Plan is trying to do. Dr. Mjaka, thank you so much for these interesting conversations. I've definitely learned a lot. I hope my lady and our viewers have also learned a lot coming out of that. Well, my lady, you've heard quite important uh, discussions that will be coming out here. Of course, we do anticipate uh, President Sil Ramaphosa to make his way here uh, anytime soon. Of course, he'll start off with the walkabout here, um, uh, seeing various uh, exhi uh, exhibitions. And of course, later on, he will be giving uh, that much anticipated address. And of course, as SABC News, we will be bringing bringing you all uh, the live uh, updates in regards to the story. With that said, it's back to you in studio.